it's the beginning of a new quarter and if you follow this channel carefully you know that at the start of each quarter i talk about the so-called deutsche bank's conviction list the deutsche bank's conviction list is a special report that the best equity analysts at deutsche bank my former colleagues put out each quarter where they talk about the best stock ideas for the following 12 months and if you look back at the performance of the last quarters and years in terms of how these stocks in these reports that they are publishing on a quarterly basis do, they are right about 87% of the time. So this is certainly a report that I pay really good attention to. I go through it in detail and use it as an inspiration in terms of ideas um, and, and kind of put them on a shopping list to potentially add some of these to my portfolio. Now, this quarter we have 32 names in this report. 32 names, I'm leaving all the details below the video in terms of who they are, uh, their targets that uh, Deutsche is putting on them. And I'm gonna spend the next 10 minutes or so talking about five of my favorite names out of those 32. But if you have any questions with regards to any of these names um, that I'm gonna talk about or the ones that are listed below the video, leave it in the comment section. We can talk about the rationale, the investment thesis in the comment section. All right, let's take a look. first company I want to talk about is a company called CrowdStrike, which is fast becoming a household name in the cybersecurity domain. And we see this every single day in the news, a security breach at the government level or regular companies that are part of our daily life, whether it's a bank, a payment company like Visa or a hotel chain where your details are being stolen. Cybersecurity is helping all of these entities defend themselves and they are fast becoming uh, a leader in the industry. Uh, they will be a key beneficiary of investment in the space. This is a domain that is gonna be with us for the next 10, 20, 30 years. And so when you look at kind of like the proliferation of the ransomware attacks around the world, uh, they are effectively rendering all of these uh, traditional antivirus systems ineffective and the whole security perimeter is being eroded. And so when you look at a company like CrowdStrike, they will be a huge beneficiary of all of the investment here. And uh, the guidance that we see from the management of a 48% growth for next year is probably too conservative. Now, like I said, they are a clear leader in the industry now in this space. Uh, they have the broadest toolbox, uh, a long list of reference customers. Uh, they uh, have a go-to-market across geographies. And one thing they do really well at CrowdStrike is they balance growth and profitability uh, evenly, they are not, you know, a traditional tech company that typically sacrifices profitability for the sake of growth. They want to be a profitable company. Now, when we talk about the valuation, right, and where to actually buy this stock, this is a relatively expensive stock on a traditional valuation metric. Uh, again, because there is so much interest in this space. But when you look at the Seeking Alpha page and kind of the, the chart of the last year or so, you see that this is a stock that traded as high as uh, three, close to three hundred dollars per share. Uh, in you know during summer 2021 and then we had this huge sell-off at the beginning of 2022 in most tech names and CrowdStrike was um, as low as $150 or so and it's recovered since but if you look at the uh, rating summary here on the right side I really like looking at this uh, the Wall Street community has a really strong buy here so when you kind of look at all the investment houses and analysts across Wall Street they have a very high opinion of CrowdStrike Deutsche Bank has a target of $240 per share, which I think is really conservative uh, given, again, how huge this market is going to be and how well positioned CrowdStrike is uh, for the future. So I think this is not a trade. This is not a quick in and out kind of a trade. This is an investment that you want to stick in your portfolio at the right level. If you see it again below 200, this is certainly a screaming buy. The second company I want to talk about from the conviction list report is a company called NIO, which is a Chinese electric vehicle maker. And by the way, that's also becoming very fast a household name, especially if you focus on the EV market and kind of look towards China, because China is really the biggest EV market in the world at this point. And uh, the Deutsche Bank analyst calls NIO an aspirational premium brand that has managed to uh, cultivate this image and deliver really a service that no other domestic Chinese uh, automaker has managed to deliver. Now, this year, 2022, will really be a pivotal year in terms of uh, strategy and financials for the company. Uh, they are set to um, start delivering the ET7 uh, model, which has had amazing reviews. Uh, they are going to be opening a second factory called Neopark. Um, the SUV ES7 model is coming to the market, and then they will have the ET5 uh, midsize sedan coming to the market. So the ET7 and the ET5 models will really be the most desirable cars in China. Now, when you look at the stock's performance, and again, we can kind of look at the Seeking Alpha page, you see that it really hasn't done much. and uh, one of the reasons, one of the big reasons why it hasn't done much and in fact kind of declined from somewhere around $50 to $20 per share now 
is uh, the fact that NEO has really kind of been stuck around 10, 11,000 monthly deliveries since September. They really hasn't, haven't been able to kind of ramp up uh, the amount of deliveries on a monthly basis. But this is really set to change and the Deutsche Bank analyst is talking about the fact that they will be somewhere around 25,000 monthly deliveries by the end of the year. That's a 150% increase. And this is going to be, again, because of the second factory, because of all these models coming to the market. Uh, and these cars are extremely desirable in China. So from a stock market perspective, you know, I, again, I like to look at these rating summaries uh, on the right side here on the Seeking Alpha page. You see the essay authors, all the contributors to Seeking Alpha, they have a strong buy rating. The Wall Street community has a strong buy rating. And when you kind of look at the stock performance here, uh, the value of this company is a lot higher than the current share price uh, kind of implies here. So NIO will be one of the leaders in this industry. It's so far still relatively small, but at some point they will also start delivering cars to countries uh, outside of China. And the third company I want to talk about is a company called Aptive. And if you don't know this company, this is a company we're kind of sticking with the auto space, the EV space. This is a company that's not uh, an EV producer. This is a company that kind of delivers to all of them, right? So if you if you want to be in this space because you recognize that the electrification of the grid and kind of the transformation of traditional uh, internal combustion engine towards electric vehicle cars is going to stay here, and I believe it will. Uh, Aptiv is a company that kind of delivers parts and technologies to all of the automakers, and they have a huge, strong order book. Uh, they had 24 billion in business awards last year, which was a new high, uh, and the market expects it's going to be even higher this year. But really, they're going to be a key beneficiary of this whole transformation of the electrification of the vehicle industry and the, the connected technologies in this space. Uh, the whole semiconductor shortages that kind of uh, the whole market is going through, whether it's delivering chips and chips companies, this is slowly going to go away. And Aptiv is really well positioned to ramp up production and deliver on that strong order book that they have. So this is a company that, again, uh, we had a 25, 30% pullback. Uh, let's look at this um, uh, chart here again on the Seeking Alpha page. So 25, 30% pullback uh, at the start of 2022, which really offers a great opportunity uh, to get in the stock at really you know, compelling levels here. Um, uh, the Deutsche Bank community or the Deutsche Bank analyst has a, a target of $158 per share on it. If you look on the rating summary here on the right side on this uh, Seeking Alpha page, you see the essay authors and the Wall Street community both have really strong buy rating uh, for Aptiv. So again, one of the investment themes, not a quick trade. You want to be in this space. If you don't want to pick just one vehicle, one EV maker like Tesla, like GM, like Ford, uh, that is kind of transitioning towards that space or go in the Chinese name like Neo that I just mentioned, Aptiv is really going to be a huge beneficiary of this transformation. The next company on the list is uh, Uber that we all use on a daily basis. But Uber at this point is a really rare combination of a market dominant position in terms of on a global basis clear optionality to unlock other uh, markets and they have a huge total addressable market there and at the same time a very low uh, investor sentiment uh, where people are just really not interested in buying Uber at this point. It's trading in the low 30s and the Deutsche Bank analyst has a target of $50 per share which in my opinion is still too low given the potential that Uber really has. So let's talk about the market dynamics around the Uber's business, right? Uh, in terms of market leadership, Uber has really a platform that Actually, let me take a step back. At this point, when you kind of look at Uber, Lyft and their competitors, this is a market that's really kind of supply constrained. This is a market that doesn't have enough drivers. And these companies like Uber and Lyft, they have consistently, they have to find ways to attract drivers to their platform. And Uber has a real advantage here versus the other ones because they have multiple products. It's not just driving people around and delivering food. They have all of these other uh, verticals that are uh, now available on the platform that effectively are offering drivers a better way to make more money and kind of a higher and denser network. So more drivers are kind of sticking around on the Uber's platform versus some of the other competitors, which again leads to kind of more engagement and more uh, leadership. Because when you look at a company like Lyft or the others, they effectively have to consistently subsidize the earnings that drivers on their platform are earning to um, uh, make them stay on the platforms, which ultimately leads to lower profitability for them. And Uber doesn't really have to do that. The second thing I want to mention here is a classic reopening play, right? Uh, not from only from the perspective of we effectively start commuting more and driving more. But again, the sharing is going to come back and all these uh, uh, products will again reappear on the Uber's platform. 
Now, uh, in terms of partnership, right, you've seen the news recently that Uber signed a partnership with the New York taxis and to list them on the platform again, which leads to more cars, more availability of uh, being driven, which leads to lower ETAs, uh, which leads again to uh, a more denser network, uh, which is you know higher earnings and more drivers on the platform sticking around around kind of Uber as a platform. When you kind of think about the future where Uber is heading, right? It's going to be the autonomous driving, but it's also going to be a market where they are not at this point. Uh, they are delivering food and driving people around and a few other things, but they really want to become the last mile delivery uh, kind of. They have the aspiration to be able to deliver anything to your door within 30 minutes. So this is going to be, if they really. Uh, realize uh, and build this foundation, uh, they will have a huge investment benefit in the future. So Uber, again, I think is a company that uh, is a theme that's going to be here for the long run uh, that you want to be invested in. Not a quick trade again, but an investment where you want to be and put it in your portfolio. Finally, the last company I want to talk about today is a company called Block, which formerly was known as Square, ticker SQ, right? This is one of the two companies that Jack Dorsey was running as a, alongside with Twitter. Now he's no longer at Twitter, he's uh, focusing 100% on Block. Uh, and so let's talk about this business, but before we go in the details of why Block uh, is really compelling uh, kind of entry level right here, let me show you a couple of charts here just to kind of illustrate that point. So this first one here shows you that, you know, we were trading above $250 towards kind of middle uh, third quarter of 2021 and sold off at the beginning of 2022 or somewhere around $120 right now. And this was really, Block just like PayPal, right? They were kind of the victims of really uh, we bid them up during the pandemic and then uh, they kind of sold off in tandem with all the other tech stocks that were kind of flying super high at the beginning of 2022 and the last few months really kind of suffered. The other chart I want to show you is a chart here where you can kind of see a relative performance of Block and uh, PayPal. Both of these are kind of in my basket really because they, they are both amazing companies I think and they kind of finally reached a valuation where they are attractive relative to the S&P 500, right? So the top line here, uh, the purple line is the S&P 500 and then the bottom line, uh, the orange line is uh, Block and the blue line is PayPal. So both of these are kind of like in my basket to buy. Uh, I own PayPal. Uh, I am considering uh, buying Block here as well at these levels because really it's kind of compelling where they are heading and where they have been. So. We all remember Square where they started, right? 12, 13 years ago as a kind of a micro merchant landscape uh, offering these little white squares where you would you know, swipe your credit card. This was just easy to do business for a lot of merchants. So this is, we're a long way from that because of all of the offering that you see on the Block or Square platform today, the recent acquisition of Afterpay, but also a ton of new features that you see on the platform with Credit Karma, with Cash App taxes, free filing and the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, Bitcoin lending. So you see a lot of different kind of features and that's in addition to Afterpay, Tidal and TBD. So again, Block is kind of the new name for Square because they have so many building blocks in the business and uh, they should do really well uh, over the next uh, year or so. So again, a company that I am a huge fan of. I'm a huge fan of what Jack Dorsey has done over the last 15 years, both at Twitter, uh, building that platform, but also obviously Square, which I have used myself. Uh, so this is an amazing product, an amazing offering. But finally, uh, we are at levels where this is really a compelling level to enter into a business that is going to be here in the long run. Because again, we are moving all the payments onto these kind of platforms like PayPal, like Square. So again, Square, I think, or Blog, uh, screaming by around, you know, just above $100, $120. I think this is a huge potential upside. Uh, Deutsche Bank has a target of $180. And when you look at the Seeking Alpha page, in terms of recommendations, you see the essay authors and the Wall Street community both with a very strong buy rating here. So again, Square slash Blog and put it in your portfolio and uh, keep it there as an investment. Don't just trade it or day trade it. All right, so much for this quarter's edition of the Deutsche Bank's conviction list. Uh, again, like I said, a report that I pay really good attention to every quarter when this comes out, a ton of great analysis. So if you have any questions about any of the five stocks I talked about over the last few minutes or any of the stocks that are in this report, again, all the details are below the video with uh, the targets that Deutsche Bank has for these. Leave it in the comment section and let's talk about the investment thesis and the rationale of why these stocks are in the report. Anyway, thanks for hanging out today. Uh, give a like to the video if you enjoyed this. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I'll see you soon.